Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners. Now, it's been quite a bit of a long time since I did my last video, okay, um, weather's not been too great lately. Uh, we're starting to get a bit of decent weather coming in now, uh, the weather's starting to warm up. And it's been one of those uh, few months that I've just had to be paying out stuff. My car decided to break down so I had to fix it, so it cost me more, more money. And I've not been able to do any product reviews or any videos. So my apologies to you guys and girls, I know you wanted uh, me to do a few videos out. It's just not been one of those past few months, it's just not been possible. And like I say, I'm back in business and hopefully pushing out some more videos. So if you've not seen some of my videos, all right, I really do appreciate if you subscribe onto my channel. There's a lot of uh, awesome product reviews and uh, projects that I have undertaken through over the years based in astronomy. And it's also based among uh, a lot of amateur astronomers and beginners alike, particularly in a budget. All right, and I did do a really good video Christmas time based on uh, avoiding trash telescopes for Christmas. Bear in mind that video is still very good advice. All right, I done part one and part two. Part two is at the top. Okay, if you've not seen that video, I suggest that anyone who's not bought a telescope, all right, please check out that link at the top. All right. So what I like to uh, share, uh, my idea is this. Now there are tons and tons of uh, videos out at the moment um, and uh, this is not new, this is not a new thing I've uh, come across. As you can see here I've got my Astro Photography rig with my NEQ6 which is super tuned okay if you've never seen that video on the super tuned series I suggest that you check up the link at the top to visit the videos and see for yourself how to uh, super tune your NEQ6 mount. Here we've got a, a Skywatcher uh, Quattro okay fantastic scope with an auto guide setup. Now the main issues that I have for all the years is power up this setup and believe me when you think about power up the mount, uh, the cameras, the dew shields and all that uh, you can use AC power unfortunately if you're going to set up outside in a um, somewhere remote all right power power is a big issue for a lot of uh, amateur astronomers and um, it does involve carrying batteries it involves carrying a lot of things and uh, with this up here I also need a computer so if I want to take uh, this setup to somewhere remote all right, I'm going to carry a lot of batteries and the main problem with batteries is that you know that you've got to have an adequate amount of battery usage all right and this setup alone will take up a lot of power all right now over the years I've been using a lot of reliable power sources like this this is a Skywatcher power tank very good pieces of kit all right this is a 17 amps per hour uh, 12 volt DC power supply it's got a lot of bells and whistles a radio uh, red lights uh, loads of power ports and uh, cigarette power ports and all that okay very good pieces of kit all right and it served me quite a few years now the main problem with this with this battery power pack is the amps per hour this is fantastic to power mount but however when you're powering many other devices like your computer uh, again it has no AC power or, or UK plus sockets or anything to power up my computer the other thing is it's great to power the, the, the mounts but when you combine it with the cameras and all that that 17 amps per hour is going to go pretty fast so it's a good piece of kit it still works okay and um, but it's just got it hasn't got the power usage that I require now for me I bought three of these 
All right, want to power up my um, telescope mount. I've got another one that's powering up uh, my juice shield, and I've got another one that will power all my cameras. Now it seems a bit too much uh, overkill with the power involved. Okay, so this this is a good piece of kit and very reliable, and I've had no real issues. But again, it's it's only suitable to a certain degree. So I've been looking around and you can get these lithium power batteries you can get which got all these nice functions with the USB uh, charging ports, you name it, you can do a lot of things. However, there is a bit of misconception, okay, I have done a lot of research and I have looked into these lithium batteries and you can get some, something ridiculous power. Now. The thing is, uh, I've seen one was like something like 40,000 milliamps per hour. However, in theory, that only works out to be a 40 amps per hour battery. Don't forget, when you're using devices with low voltages, that may be true. Okay, so if you're powering up USB for 5 volts at 5 volts or 2.1 volts or something like that, you can get amazing amount of amperage per hour. Right from that lithium battery, but the gimmick on the selling point is to trick people to buy thinking they bought a, an awesome lithium battery, which are pretty good because lithium batteries are very good. You can drain them all the way down to almost 80% of their power. Right, yeah, you can really use a, a you get a lot of uh, life out of them, plus the recycle charges. Okay, you can charge them thousands and thousands of times okay and they'll, they'll still be running for a good 10 to 15 years okay however the main problem about these lithium batteries is they're very expensive right extremely expensive and you could pay up to about a grand for a battery all right and I'm not joking all right it's a serious amount of money but I've done a lot of research and I've come across a few uh, products that I like to share with you, okay. And um, I've thought about buying these Gucci lithium batteries that's got all these funky, fancy bells and whistles and all that. They sound pretty good. However, there is one that I looked at, and it's like four hundred pounds for a lithium battery with all the Gucci ness or all the Gucci stuff with it. However, it's only a forty amp battery, which is not enough to power up. If I'm going to take this whole setup to power up. All the accessories, my computer, uh, my cameras, my dew shield, uh, dew heaters, and the mount together. And that 40 milliamp per hour sounds a lot of power, but believe me, you end up killing the battery rather quick. All right, it may last you probably all night, but it's not going to guarantee you uh, the next night. Okay, you need to start charging it up, uh, ready to get uh, ready, so you can. Uh, start using the uh, imaging uh, setup again so there are disadvantages with uh, lithium batteries being so expensive and these really Gucci ones that are saying they do 120,000 milliamps and all that you could get a lot of amps per hour if you're drawing a little very little amounts of current and you're using low voltages but my setup here relies on 12 volts so like my cameras, my CCDs, uh, my mounts, my juice shields all run on 12 volts of power. So when you're drawing out 12 volts of power, you're going to need a lot of ampage for a battery. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this battery box that I found. And, I, and believe it or not, there are so many battery boxes, right? On YouTube, there's loads of videos and all that. All right? This is not new stuff. They're really handy when you haven't got the power, okay? Um, if you don't have AC power available to you, all right, these portable battery boxes will give you uh, quite a lot of power usage now, depending what batteries you use. But I have actually just found a battery box which I think is perfect for astrophotography. Now, a lot of the, the products I will show you in this video. The links are on the bottom, okay, so if you watch on the video and you like what you see, alright, I provided the link so you can order the parts and you can do the project yourself. This is a simple uh, setup that anyone can make themselves, alright, I kept it nice and simple 
and within budget. However, you know, I've done a lot of research and I've looked at AMG batteries, I've looked at normal standard uh, lead batteries, All right, I looked at a variety of things. Now the main concern you must consider, you need a deep cycle battery. You can't use a car battery all right, for the, the battery box. All right? If you're powering this equipment for a long time, right, you don't want a massive surge of electricity because car batteries just give you that oomph of ampage. Right, you don't need that massive oomph of that ampage. And if you're using a car battery, it's going to risk damaging your equipment for starters. And the other thing is, it's just going to damage the car battery. Right, the car batteries are not designed to uh, to power up equipment for long periods of time. The main purpose of a car battery, being myself as a vehicle mechanic by trade, all right, car batteries. It just gives you the initial torque, all right, the ampage to start up your starter motor to then start up your engine. Okay, that's what they're designed for. They're not designed for long, uh, low drainage or power usage for long periods of time. Because what it's going to do, it's just going to damage the cells in the battery. All right, so you're looking for a deep cycle battery. That's the first thing you need to look at. Look at a deep cycle battery. All right. Now, there are different types of variants. AMG is probably the best value battery I will consider right, if you've got uh, a, for an imaging setup like this because they give out, they, they, they operate quite well in the, in the winter months, okay? They're not going to uh, discharge much. But the, uh, the biggest problems about AMG batteries, they're a heavy, okay? Again, um, you've got to give a bit of a uh, bit of give and take in this one so expect to carry these batteries these are going to be heavy all right and believe me they can weigh to about 20 to 30 kilos okay for each of these batteries but you need a heavy duty decent uh, AMG battery deep cycle battery all right that will provide you plenty of power particularly this setup the main disadvantage with the AMG batteries is you can only discharge them down to 50%. Once you get to about 50%, all right, you're going to start damaging the battery. All right, you're just going to reduce the uh, the, re the recycle time. So every time, uh, every time you discharge that battery, it's just going to reduce the amount of recycle times. Okay. Now I've had an AMG battery that I did initially use, all right, to charge up some of my telescope mounts. Unfortunately. Uh, the biggest problem is that I let it to discharge till it runs flat and that is not good all right because all that's doing is damaging that battery and the battery I had was a 40 amps per hour AMG battery it was good when it was first brand new but now I've had it five years it just can't hold the charge I need to replace it so what perfect time uh, to do this is to show you this project review Right, on this new battery box that I bought. So I needed uh, another battery I was looking at. So the battery I was looking at is gel type batteries. Again, these are deep cycle batteries. And with these batteries, the gel type, they are slightly bit more expensive, but they're nowhere near as devastatingly expensive compared to a lithium batteries. So I picked a gel type and this gel type is, um, these can be discharged down to about 20%, 20 to 30%. Okay, that depends on the amount of uh, the charge you've got on the on these on these batteries. Now, I've I provided links to this battery. All right, this is a 100 amp uh, battery. All right, gel type battery, and they're nowhere near as expensive as lithium. Okay, and they do last a lot longer than AMG batteries. Well, I picked out the gel type because they seem to fit the bill. They're reasonably priced. One disadvantage is they're extremely heavy. Um, you've got to give a bit of rough and take with this one. But when you're taking portable power with you, batteries are not light either way. Even some of the lithium batteries can be heavy, but they don't. You know, it just depends on what size battery you're going to buy. But this this gel type battery seems to be reasonably priced for the money it might be a bit heavy 
but it gives me a lot longer amps per hour. Now I got, I picked the 100 amps per hour and what I did was calculated it to, and because I can discharge it down to about 20% without damaging the battery, all right, I've, I've sort of like cut it to about, in theory, I did a bit of calculation, it works out of 80 amps per hour to play about with. Okay, and it gives me enough power for a couple of nights. So, depending on uh, what I'm going to use, right, or what setups I'm going to use, that 80 amps per hour battery is going to serve its purpose, right? So, I can't find anything that's sort of decent value. I mean, I'd love to have, I, love, I wish I could afford a lithium battery, for, for example. A lithium battery is going to offer a lot more power and I can literally drain that battery to its flat and then I can just recharge it whenever, right? But the gel type battery seems to offer me uh, almost as much performance as a lithium, but not quite. But they're going to be better than the AMG battery, all right? But it really just depends on your budget, all right? I picked out a good battery, you know, reasonably priced. They're not, ma they're not. Uh, they're not massively expensive, but they're not cheap either. So I picked this gel battery and it seems to fit the bill, okay, for myself. So we take a closer look on this battery box. This is the KK Moon battery box. It's a 12 volt with a USB charger, okay, and we take a close look here. The USB charger is here, so you've got ports for a 5 volt to a 1 amp and a 5 volt to 2.1 amp okay is it does have 12 volt cigarette adapters okay and the waterproof adapters as well all right with the nice uh, fitments there to keep the uh, the electrics nice and dry now again I've searched everywhere for battery boxes and like this one here is very good because it has a, a voltmeter it also has a circuit breaker as well for its protection but again this is the most useful thing about this box all right uh, it's got on and off switch as well all right so i can isolate the power without having to take out leads and all that what have you but that is the most important part of this box is a 12 volt voltmeter with gel type batteries you can go as low as 12.1 volt anything lower then you're going to start uh, damaging the battery but I will provide a, a link of the discharge types for different various batteries as you can see here it comes with two battery terminals clearly indicated positive and negative Okay, this is very useful for charging up uh, your battery or uh, or attaching power uh, sources on there. All right. Bit disappointed. I was I was expecting a better quality than just mild steel terminals, but it seems to work fine. Now the box is made out of ABS plastic, very durable plastic with a nice good carrying handle. There's also good carrying handles here, either side, okay, like so. Now the box weighs around 1.75 kilograms, and the box dimensions is 43 uh, centimeters in length, 32 uh, centimeters in uh, the actual width, and the actual depth is around about 27 centimeters. So it can hold 100 amp batteries okay quite extensive amount of batteries now the good thing about this box it does have other key nice touches i do like the securing bracket here all right which is quite strong durable strap and you can lift it out like so to expose electrics i was slightly a bit disappointed at first because these terminals are not that great okay that's the only bugbear I had with this box. All right, the terminals are quite big. I think they're to fit a 10 mil outlet, but um, I was expecting better quality cables than that. 
Other than that, everything else seems to be quite good quality. That's the whole setup there. Uh, it costs around about £72.99 p, which is really quite cheap to considering that there are many power boxes out there that will cost even more. But what you do get is you get a lot more accessories and a lot more attachments for this box. And the, even, the, even the, with the nice touches involved, it even comes with securing brackets to secure your strap. So as you can see, it's already pre-drilled, right? There's already holes pre-drilled, so you can attach those little brackets here so that you can secure that Velcro strap, so it gives it a bit more security. And the, the pre-hole drills are on both sides as well. So you can fix these uh, securing strap clips and then you can secure that strap even more. So there are some nice touches. That's the box. I'm not going to go too much in detail. Now my next purchase is I purchased this battery here. Now this is quite a heavy lump battery, right? Again, it's filled with this gel electrolyte, which means it doesn't spill. It's completely sealed and maintenance free. All right. It can operate in different temperatures quite well. Usually between uh, minus 10 to plus 50 degrees. Also, there is uh, it's got better resistance to shock and vibration, which makes it ideal if I'm transporting this battery all the way around uh, to a remote site. Okay, this is not going to damage the battery either way. Now, batteries can be angled a certain way. Okay, I can angle it on its side if you want. But I'm not going to because this is just going to be held in that box there. Now the life expectancy is supposed to be five years, all right, and they can last up to ten years if you look after them. So in other words, don't discharge them until they're flat. Basically, you just discharge them to a certain point, okay, and uh, once you get to that certain point, then you need to charge this battery. Now the size of this battery. Yeah, you know, it's it's 30, 331 millimeters in length. It's 173 millimeters in width, and 270 millimeters in depth. Okay. Now this is a Type 31 battery, and this battery will fit bang on into that box there, as you can see. It weighs a ton, though. All right, it does weigh 30 kilograms. All right, but be prepared. Not all batteries, when you take them out in the field, are going to be light. They are going to be heavy. A deep cycle intelligent char charger, okay, this will charge my battery with 9 amps of power, alright. I don't think these, uh, they make these anymore, but they're all equivalent variants of this, alright. And this is designed for gel deep cycle batteries, alright. Very good quality charger. That's the sort of battery charger you require to charge this type of battery. Please do not use a normal car battery charger because if you use that it's going to damage the cells all right and again this type 31 battery fits perfectly in this box okay as I'm going to demonstrate here again it is heavy but again use your guns right and there you go it fits perfectly and I do have Plenty of space. I've got I've got a good half an inch gap there. For my project, I've included a few items, okay, which I feel is going to be handy for for my actual imaging setup. The first thing I've included is this. This is a 300 watt car power adapter, okay, and it has it can be it can run on 12 volts and it converts the AC current, the alternate current, to 230 volts with a built-in 4.8 amp dual USB charger, a built-in voltmeter as well, all right, so it gives me some readings on how much power I'm drawing out. It has one UK plug, which is, I think, is more than adequate for my setup, because this will be the connection for my laptop. It does have 12, two times 12 volt cigarette adapters, Again, the reason why I got this is because me a bit I use a lot of cigarette adapters for my setup and most of my CCDs and my cameras, uh, my telescope mount, 
Again, it's a very light, compact inverter. Unfortunately, it's not a pure sine wave inverter. However, it does power up my, uh, my laptop and all that without any running issues, okay? It's fan cooled as well. And so, and it does have protection with uh, fuses and all that as well. So if, if you overload it, it does have cooling set up as well. Now, again, what, it cost me around about £28 all right, for this item. It's very light, compact. However, I picked this inverter because it's probably, you know, with inverters, you've got to decide on how much power you're going to use. And me personally, most of my setups are cigarette adapters, all right, that I use. Some people don't really like them. For me, they've worked all right for me. Uh, but the only thing is, the only AC power I do need is, is just that. All right, that is just basically to run my laptop, all right, for my engine setup. And I think it's more than adequate, really. But again, you decide on what inverter you're gonna, you wish to pay for. You could spend a ton of money on inverters, all right. They're not expensive, okay. This is the attachment, but I don't like it because you can, you're restricted to 10 amps. And if you're using 10 amps of power, if you're redrawing any equipment over that, you can burn out the wire of the cigarette and cause fires. So this is this is the, the cable. This is an Anderson plug, all right. And this is basically a 50 amp Anderson plug with a 10 gauge wire. And again, I I decided to use this because it's a lot more robust, and it's not going to. If I'm going to use out more power, I'm not going to burn out uh, that cable. So I'm not restricted to 10 amps. I can use more power if I wish. All right, but ideally, with this inverter, you know you can you can push out the amps, but you just got to be careful not to increase too much on the watts. Okay, but I'm never going to use 150 watts. All right, so if I can, I can use 300 watts, but I will never exceed the 150 watts. So this is more more than ample for me and it's, it's quite simple I can just attach it nice and secure with this Anderson connection all right it's a lot more robust all right it's a better wire and I'm not going to risk anything of over uh, overheating or through the just using excessive amount of power so this is a much better cable so this is uh, what I use again the link for this cable is in the description below. Uh, I've got this, this is a watt meter. Again, this is high precision. It operates between 4.8 volts to around about 60 volts. Now this watt meter can operate at 150 amps maximum. But the reason why I got this is I can monitor uh, the power usage. So again, I just need to monitor the me, uh, my voltage, I need to monitor me the amount of current I'm using and the wattage of power. Mostly the current mainly because I need to know how many amps per hour I'm redrawing for my battery. And this, this useful gadget will help me whatever I'm connecting up onto my battery I need to monitor so I don't discharge my battery. But when I do get to a certain point I need to start disconnecting or switch off the battery and start recharging it. And least but not least is I've got this. This is a this is a 0.5 meter long Anderson plug with a 10 built-in 10 amp fuse. All right, it comes with a 12 gauge cable and it's got eight millimeter ringlets as well. Now what this cable harness is, is basically a charging cable all right this cable is going to uh, is used for like solar stuff so if I can want to connect a solar panel on there okay I can charge up my battery through solar or off-grid or I can um, use this to power other things as well I'm going to attach the uh, certain items it's very easy to assemble we put in the webbing okay like so the securing strap and what we're going to do is we're going to put in the, the brackets 
So we place the, the security brackets like so. Okay, we're putting the, the nuts in the there. Tighten them up using this cross point and a socket. Okay, don't need to over tighten them, just nip them up. So, what I've done now is I've drilled out four holes, five mil holes, okay, and this is going to be where my inverter is going to be situated. Alright, and we just line them up and we just put on the bolts like so. Now it really depends on how you want to place your power inverter, right? It really does uh, depends on how on your setup. Okay, so I decided to set it up here. My personal preference. Some people might have better ideas than what I have. All right, but it's just enough so I can strap the straps. It is not in the way. All right, but it's flush in there. All right, but it really depends on your taste. All right, you can put the the power inverter on the side. So as you can see now, I've place my bolts on there like so it's bolted on and I've connected the cables all right it's nice and secure don't worry about this buckle all right I've made it I made sure that it's all mated together so it's the installation all right using my aluminium foil insulation foam all right and I place that in the bottom all right it's already pre-cut and I can just place it in the bottom okay this insulation is going to help to protect my battery uh, as you can see here I've again I've used that insulation all right I'm going to lift her in like so so this insulation is going to protect the battery from cold all right and this is positioned nice and snugly and it also protects the battery from the protruding screws as well the screws that stick out okay so it will protect it from that as well so that's the insulation installed so now we've fitted the Anderson plug with two with the two bolts okay it's now secured inside like so nice and flush all right and what that's going to do is because it's shielded from the elements all right there's a bit of a roof it will protect uh, the Anderson plug from any ingress of water so getting in. we're going to rewire the cabling all right, now we've got the Anderson plug installed. Remove the terminals like so. All right, what I tend to do is I connect the positive first. All right, there's no real requirements on how you want to connect it. Just make sure that wherever your leads are connected, it's, it's not it's clear from any possible uh, any sparks. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the, the bolt, we're going to connect the positive side, like so. So connect the positive lead, okay, and then we're going to connect the negative lead, like so. So connect that, that. Like so, okay. There's one thing I need to add as well. Make sure when you connect these power leads, just make sure that your switch is turned off. All right, it's in the off position. So that's connected up. What we're going to do is type using the 14 mil spanner, all right, and just tighten it up. All right, make sure you're not wearing any jewelry or any rings, all right. Because if you do wear any jewellery, you may get sparked and you may get uh, zapped. All right, and it's no good if you get zapped. And again, you can use gloves, all right, to protect your hands. All right, rubber gloves. But there's no requirement. Just nip them up like so, and that's that connected up. All right, very easy to install. Now, what we've done is we've connected it into parallel. So what we're going, what's, what it's going to do. Is it's going to provide 12 volts of power all the way through my Anderson plug, all right, and I can still use my power connections like so, uh, providing the 12 volts. 
So that's that's everything installed, right? Make sure all the leads are connected. Now the one thing I need to add as well, uh, when you first buy this box, make sure that these are tight as well, because they have been loose, all right? So I've checked that this is hand tight. So make sure that your cigarette adapters and USB connections are tight as well. And it's relatively easy. Once everything's connected, I just tilt the container, all right? Flip it round, and I'm just gonna secure it at the back, like so. Okay, and there you go. All right, nip it up, and that's that. This gives me uh, the ability now to connect my inverter in there. All right, and it just clips in there. Have you noticed with the inverter? is as soon as I connect it up, that means my battery is got power straight away. Now, I was going to incorporate a, a in, on and off switch in there, but to be honest with you, I can't see the real point of that, because all you have to do is just disconnect that. It's basically a switch in itself. Now, the good thing about this setup is I can also incorporate my watt meter, okay? The good thing about these connections, you can't cross connect, all right? They fit one way and one way only, all right? It's very easy. And again, connect it up, all right? And I've got my watt meter installed there, okay? So I've got my watt meter there and it's going to read out whatever power I'm drawing out. I, it, because it's in connected into uh, Palo Alto, all right? I've still got the power at the top, all right? Still got the power at 13.2, all right, and I can still power up uh, my USB, all right. You must have this switched on to activate the USB, and it also gives me uh, the power for these sockets. So I've got basically four cigarette lighters, okay, all right, already activated, ready to go, and that's and that gives me plenty of ports to power it up okay and if I want to plug in my laptop all right I must plug it into the main uh, plug it into the uh, the UK plug all right and I just quickly just switch on the switch there all right that will activate the inverter for the AC power uh, the good thing about this is if I'm not I can power all my uh, sockets okay without the inverter having to be switched on so if I switch that off I can still use the power on these uh, cigarette sockets here. What I recommend is, I've noticed I have a waterproof bung here, so to protect uh, the, um, the Anderson socket. Again, you can alternatively get one for the uh, inverter side as well. All right, these are very handy. They only cost a couple of pence. All right, and they fit nice and perfectly. All right, and they do protect it. And again. You can always put the harness to one side, all right, and uh, you can lift the whole settle. Now, I won't recommend to lift it from the handle, okay? I would recommend that if, because this, this box now weighs around about 35 kilograms, it's, it's, it's heavy. So, there are handles here where you can lift it from the bottom, and I would seriously recommend that you do that. All right, to prevent, because uh, this clip can come off. Now, if I had lighter batteries, that will not be the, that will not be the case. Unfortunately, I've I've really put out a really heavy uh, battery in there, so use the handles on the side when you're lifting up uh, this battery box. So that's basically my entire setup. All right, and it only takes a couple of uh, minutes to get it all set up. Right, and you've basically got portable power with the capabilities of a AC inverter, okay? So it gives me uh, more functionality on this battery box.
So, there you have it. As you can see, very good product. All right, I've, you know, I've tested it out. It runs. It performs. I expect. I mean, end of the day, it's a battery box. But the reason why I picked this battery box is that I was going to make one myself. But think about it. I mean, the amount of uh, parts I'm going to need and things I'm going to need to build my own battery box. It's not really cost effective. However, with this battery box, it is. It's got a lot of things and you know, a lot of a lot of useful gadgets on there. All right, and I do like the voltmeter. It's very accurate, and it's a crucial part of this uh, cell so that you don't discharge your battery. And the thing is, the only qualms I have about it is the actual battery terminal leaves could be made a bit better, but everything else. It's fantastic, and this uh, gel battery can power up my sub all night long. Gives me a bit more power to spare as well. All right. The only qualm about it is that um, with this setup here, you know, if I'm using my laptop again, my laptop, I only have that running on its own battery. As soon as it starts to discharge, I start to put on the AC power uh, inverter okay and start charging up my laptop battery all right i have to you know i won't have my computer running all the time so my computer laptop will run on its batteries for about seven hours as soon as it starts to lose its power then i'll activate the ac inverter all right and then it will charge up my computer batteries okay as soon as they're, they're charged up i'll disconnect it the, that's the only biggest power increase is the laptop okay this power box, it, it just ran like a dream, okay? I, I had no power issues whatsoever, you know? And some people don't like to use battery boxes. Some people rather use AC power supply. But again, it really depends on uh, your setup, okay? It really depends on several factors. And I'm definitely gonna buy another one of these, all right? It's reasonably priced. However, it is designed for 100 amp batteries. So this battery box for power batteries which are type 27 or type 31 batteries, right, without a glitch. Alright, so it's big capacity, and 100 amps per hour uh, battery. Yeah, you can get a lot of power out there in the field. So I'm here to help you guys and girls to give you a little bit of uh, tips, alright. And I think this is a very good value for money, this battery box, it really is. Right, there's loads of functions useful accessories on there all right and i can't see the point in building one because if you're going to build one yourself and make it custom made to yourself you end up spending probably more to build than if you're going to buy this cell because it's got everything you need all right and i do like how it's got nice uh, other touches i've seen a lot of expensive battery boxes for a lot lot more money all right and believe me Right, there are some really, you know, good quality ones out there, but they are very expensive too. And this one is reasonably priced, all right, and I think it's probably one of the better battery boxes you can buy. All right, so would I recommend it? Yes, I would, definitely. All right, I think it's really good value for money. So again, if you like watching my videos, again, please hit the like button, okay? I just need a bit of your support. You know, hitting the like button is only going to help my uh, uh, channel out more. All right, there will be more videos coming out soon. All right, and again, uh, hit the subscribe button, and again, activate notifications. All right, hitting the notifications by hitting the bell is only going to so you don't miss out any videos I publish out in the near future. And I wish you all clear skies, and look forward to another video from me. So. Thanks again, thanks for watching, and I wish you all clear skies.